Hey there, welcome to episode 101 of Mike's Collection. Now, if you were here for episode 100, that was a nearly two hour just dump of all kinds of action figures that I had gotten for about a month leading up to that video. Uh, I think that was probably a little too long, so we'll keep this one a little shorter. Um, as I mentioned in the last video, I was really hoping for my 100th episode that I'd be able to review my Snake Mountain that I've got coming in, which is a Masters of the Universe playset. Uh, unfortunately, that still hasn't come, and I haven't even got a ship notification for it yet, but I'm hoping to get that this week. So hopefully I do have that here by the holidays, so you should see that, uh, that video up by the end of the year. In the meantime, I have gotten a couple of new figures uh, in the past week, week and a half, so I figured I might as well throw a video up and show you that stuff. Because honestly, I probably won't get many more new toys to show you until Christmas. Typically, uh, anything I buy for myself in December, um, I usually just, I don't let myself open it. I'll just like wrap it up and I'll put it under the tree. Because um, I'm, you know, I'm somebody that loves Christmas. I love that feeling of open, you know, waking up Christmas morning and opening up new toys. And uh, even though I'm a, you know, I've been a toy collector my whole life, I don't get nearly as many toys now as a grown up as I did as a kid because you know my mom and dad used to buy me all kinds of toys my siblings we all gift each other toys you know by way of my parents santa claus got me toys uh but nowadays my parents will buy me a sweater me and my siblings don't really buy for each other that much anymore uh vanessa my wife will usually buy me a toy or two but there's not a whole lot so when uh december rolls around i will still buy myself a few things as i'm making trips to the mall and whatnot so i typically like to set those aside to make Christmas morning a little bit more exciting for myself. So, with that being said, I probably won't have much to review for you until after Christmas. But this this stuff here, this is the last of the stuff I get in November, so I'll show you that now. Um, so I got a couple of Star Wars Black series figures. Now I've opened all this stuff up already, so I'll just cut to a little split screen just so I can show you what some of this stuff looks like in the box. Um, but I got Ahsoka. So she's the character that first appeared in, was it Renegades or Clone Wars? I'm not sure which one came first. Uh, I don't really watch a whole lot of the animated Star Wars stuff. I did watch the, like, the tail end of the last season because there was a lot of hype around that because the show had kind of, like it took place between the two live action movies, Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith. So... The show had been taking place between them, but by the end of the season, it had kind of caught up to the movie and the events were happening, happening simultaneously with the events of Revenge of the Sith. And, uh, you know, I'd been hearing good things that it was kind of retroactively making those movies better because you were getting like a bigger picture of things. So I watched some of those and those few episodes I watched really did kind of make me a fan of Ahsoka and... As of last week, she appeared in live action for the very first time, appearing in the new episode of The Mandalorian. So it's very timely that I got this figure. I had pre-ordered it uh, a couple of months ago. Now this figure is actually based more on her Rebels look. Um, so she's not wearing the outfit from her most recent live action appearance. Um, but yeah, I think this is a cool figure. I think there's another one coming out soon in her more, like her more modern outfit. But we'll see if I get this one. This one looks pretty nice as is. Um, I also got another Stormtrooper. I complain a lot about the amount of Stormtroopers getting released, but it really is getting ridiculous. It seems like every single week I'm buying some new variation of a Stormtrooper, whether it's a black Stormtrooper or a gold Stormtrooper or a red Stormtrooper. And when I say Stormtrooper, I mean any any trooper type, really, because uh, this guy here, he's not necessarily called a Stormtrooper. He's called like a Scout Trooper. Um... I'm familiar with these guys because they first appeared in Return of the Jedi. I called them Biker Scouts. I think that's what they were called in the packaging because they rode the speeder bikes. Um, but this figure here, he's based on... Uh, he's from a video game, so he doesn't have a, a bike. So he's not a Biker Scout. He's just a Scout Trooper. Uh, and uh, yeah, so he's packaged singly for the first time, which is cool because before you could only get this figure packaged with the bike. So it was a little bit more expensive. So if you had passed on that, this is your chance to get a biker scout without having to buy the bike. Um, another new figure I got from Star Wars Black Series is this one here, which is a clone trooper, which I would also classify as a stormtrooper. Um, now this is one of, I think, five holiday 
stormtroopers that they've released. All of them are exclusive to different stores. Most of them I probably won't be able to find. I think one is at Best Buy. One of them is at uh, maybe Walgreens. One of them is at Target. And some of those stores I don't have around me anywhere. Uh, so this one here, I got it at EB Games. Um, so it might be a GameStop exclusive in the States. Uh, EB Games is where a lot of random exclusives from the States tend to show up here in Canada. So maybe even the Target exclusive versions and stuff will show up here. I don't know. I'm not going to really hunt these things out. But uh, they're pretty neat. And since I saw one in the wild, I thought I would pick it up. Now, I also got one new Transformer. So this here is Blue Streak. And this is from the Earthrise series. Now, uh, you know, I was pretty excited about this figure because I've actually never owned a Blue Streak figure. Like, there's nothing particularly exciting about him. If there really was, I probably would have sought one out. But he's one of the original Transformers from 1984. Um, you know, so it's always kind of been a hole in my collection. I knew I would kind of get one eventually. It just never really happened. And so, yeah, now I've got one. So those are all the new things I've gotten in the last couple of weeks. Um, once I finish this intro, we'll open those things up and we'll take a closer look at them in a little bit more detail. So stick around for that if you want to know a little bit more about any of those figures. But I wanted to do this right here on camera now. So I did get a new package in today. And it's December 1st when I'm filming this. So I got this box in and this is something I'm excited about. So I thought, you know what, this maybe I should wrap it up and put it under the tree for Christmas. It'll give me something to look forward to. But there's a reason why I kind of want to open it up now. For one, it's just on the cusp of, you know, November, December. So I'm, I'm sure I'll get a few more things before the end of the month that I can unwrap for Christmas. But uh, this thing here, it's a, uh, this is the first for me of this particular toy line. And there's a few more that are for sale. I'll explain more in a little bit more detail. But if I'm going to order those ones, it might hinge on the quality of this. So I don't want to order more figures until I've kind of had an opportunity to take a look at this. So just to give you a, a little bit of background, uh, I'm a huge fan of the comic book series Tank Girl. Uh, I have been since I first discovered it, which is around the time of the movie coming out, which I think was, I want to say, 94 five maybe 94 um so because like i've been collecting comic books for quite a bit quite a few years before that but i was a marvel kid and like i was a kid so i wasn't really looking for a whole lot of weird independent stuff i was mostly buying spider-man and x-men that sort of stuff so i wasn't aware of a lot of these kind of weird underground comic books but so tank girl was like a series that was created by alan martin and jamie hewlett uh both guys from the UK. Uh, Tank Girl is a character that like lives in Australia, and she hangs out with these kangaroo people. And it's a really kind of zany punk rock comic book that doesn't really have a coherent plot line. It kind of jumps all over the place. It's really kind of silly, but uh, I really enjoyed it. And so that comic book got a little more popular around the time the movie was coming out. The movie is also pretty silly and pretty weird, and it's not very true to the comic books. But I still really enjoyed it. Uh, I love that movie. I thought Lori Petty was fantastic as Tank Girl. I wish um, they had done, you know, a sequel or some more. I wish that had kind of made Tank Girl even more popular. But it, it didn't really take off. I, I, that movie probably would be considered a bomb. And the property kind of fizzled out after that. I think there was some, like, red tape. And the rights to the character got tied up with the movie studio. And so there was no new comic book coming out for years. And there was no merchandise. So just when I was getting into Tank Girl, she kind of vanished. And I really wanted an action figure of Tank Girl. I always really did. Not only is she a cool character, but based on the artist Jamie Hewlett's like, artwork, that just would have been something that would have been really cool to get. And uh, I don't think they've ever, actually I'm quite sure they've never made any sort of action figure of Tank Girl or any of her you know, friends and foes from the comic books. Um, the only piece of merchandise, like I have some Tank Girl t-shirts, but the only piece of actual merchandise that would kind of classify as an action figure that I've ever seen is this uh, statue kit that you could buy and snap together yourself and paint it yourself. Uh, and I'm not much for snapping together and painting myself. I'm sure it would have looked horrible. But uh, the, my local comic shop, the one that I go to all the time, Strange Adventures, they had one of these kits. And they had it sitting on display for years. And I had asked uh, the owner, Cal, if I could 
make him an offer on it, but uh, it was gifted to him. Some a customer I think had painted it and given it to Cal, so it was just kind of there as a display piece. Uh, I don't know what he's done with it now because the shop has since moved to a new location and Tank Girl is not on display anymore. Uh, so maybe he's got it at home. But uh, other than that, Tank Girl statue, which I always wanted to get my hands on, um, yeah, there's been no Tank Girl merchandise. And no, just so you know, this is not Tank Girl. There's a lot of buildup for, for nothing, really. But uh, I became a big fan of, like I said, Jamie Hewlett's artwork. And after Tank Girl, uh, he went on to become a co-creator of the band The Gorillas which uh, you might be familiar with them. He formed that band with uh, Damon Albarn from, he's the lead singer of Blur. So it was a, what do they call themselves? They're like a not, they're not a real band. It's a cartoon band. Jamie Hewlett created four characters. So there was the lead singer 2D and then there was Murdoch, Russell and Noodles. So these four characters and then Damon did the music. He's the only, uh, Kind of consistent figure in the uh, the actual band of gorillas. So if you've ever listened to them, you probably recognize his voice because he does 2D, the lead singer, and he's pretty much in every gorilla song. Um, the other characters, Noodles, Murdoch, Russell, they don't really have voices. Uh, there's no real person associated with them. So I never got as attached to any of those characters, but I always really liked 2D. Um, and yeah, so these characters, Grills, have been around since, I think, 1998. They've put out seven albums. They just put out a new album this year, which is pretty good. Um, I am a big fan of the Grills music, but at the same time, it's not my, my usual genre. Like, I'm more of an alternative rock, kind of punk music. So where the Grills is a lot more kind of hip-hop and, and pop, uh, synth-pop kind of stuff. So I, I, every time they put a new album, I enjoy it, I listen to it. But it tends not to stay in rotation for a super long time because it's just not my, my genre of choice. Anyway, even if the, uh, you know, the music isn't always my cup of tea, I always love the visuals that accompany all their new albums that is all produced by Jamie Hewlett. So there's a ton of like animated uh, music videos, lots of little promo pieces, pieces of artwork that have been released, whether it's posters or postcards or whatever. So there's lots of cool Gorillaz merchandise. And they did make, some company made, some Gorillas little vinyl figures back in, I think it was 2005. And they were like limited and they were hard to find and I wasn't aware of them when they came out. So sure enough, I missed them. I really wanted them, but they got really expensive very quickly on the secondary market. And they weren't a giant priority for me, so I've never really sought them out. Anyway, we're almost here. So a couple of months ago, I started getting these ads on my Instagram for a new vinyl figure. Uh, it was advertised as the first vinyl figures of gorillas in, I don't know, 15 years since those 2005 figures. And uh, those 2005 figures, I think they were much smaller, like maybe six inches, probably even smaller than that. Anyway, this here was advertised as a 13 inch vinyl figure of the lead singer of gorillas 2D. And it was something I was really excited about. I'd been eyeballing it for a while but he was a little pricey. I was reluctant to pull the trigger, but the ads, they obviously knew I kept lingering on those ads because it seemed to pop up more and more and more and more. And then uh, a couple of weeks ago, I got an email saying that they were offering a bit of a discount. So I said, all right, I'm finally doing this. And I'm sure that they will eventually do the other band members. So I thought I'll get this. And after I spend some time with it, then I'm sure they'll eventually put up another character and then I'll decide if I want to order that figure and then maybe a couple months later they'll put up another figure. Anyway, after I ordered this thing, literally like the next day, and this had been advertised for, for months, this one figure, and this was the only one they had. So after I finally ordered it, it was like the day after that they advertised that they now had not only a new version of 2D, but they had all three other members of the band ready to go. So you can order the whole set for like $400. And I was like, you know, it's Christmas time. I just got this figure. I don't really have $400 to spend, but if they offer a holiday discount for the group, I might be tempted to do that. They are limited edition. I don't want to sit on them too long in case they sell out. So that, that is a very long story as to tell you why I want to open this up now. So I can kind of get a look at this thing. If I open it up and it's a disappointing piece of junk, then I'll be like, okay, I won't bother with those other figures. But if I open it up and I love it, which I kind of expect to, then I might need to order the other gorilla figures. So let's open this bad boy up right now. So you can see by the size of the box, it's a good size. 
So the company that makes these, it's called Super Plastic. Uh, I don't know much about them. I think they are associated with Kid Robot, which is a, again, not a company I'm really familiar with, but I've heard the name around for years. They make vinyl figures. So I'm not sure if Kid Robot became Super Plastic or maybe some of the guys from Kid Robot went off and formed Super Plastic. I don't know. But here we go. So we open it up. Get some paper in here. Alright, there's our box. Gorillas 2D. Super Plastic 12 inch vinyl figure. So let's pop this guy out of here. It's a good sized box. Alright, so this side's kind of, kind of gold. Gorillas 2D. Then on the side, we get some text that carries over. It's got this almost kind of weird 3D effect on it with the way the word gorillas is painted behind them there. But there you see 2D. So there's Jamie Hewlett's artwork. So if you weren't familiar with them before, this is what we're talking about. So yeah, looks really cool. This guy's kind of funky shoes on. Yeah, so this is what the figure is going to look like. That is a, a drawing to represent the figure. So let's slice this over here. to see in there just a big empty box but here's our guy he smells cool he smells like a, I don't know, like a smells like new plastic all right Here we go. So my first impressions. So first off, these things here, there's some batteries included because this figure's eyes light up. Now we'll show you that later once I get a chance to open this. Like I'll play with them a little bit more and we'll get a closer up review of them. But there you can see his eyes are kind of glassy and see-through because that's because they're going to light up. And how you change the batteries is you plop his hair off and there you can get to the battery pack. So that's pretty cool. I'll get that back on properly. There we go. So that sets on there pretty nice. Yep, stays relatively sturdy. It kind of clips into place so the hair doesn't fall off immediately. You see there he's got his microphone. I don't know if he can come away from the microphone. It doesn't look like it. It looks like his hands are sculpted directly directly attached to it but there you see he's got his missing tooth and uh, yeah there's a little bit more protection here on the display base now this is metal this pole here it's cold to the touch this is plastic or vinyl on the bottom of it. now his shoes are really cool you can see that he's got the white and pink shoes with the buckle Again, you'll be able to see it in a little bit more detail once I uh, set him over there on the desk. But yeah, this is this is pretty cool. He's a good size. Uh, he definitely captures the look of the artwork. Like, uh, if I bring this back in here for a sec. Like, that's pretty spot on. So. Anyway, yeah. I dig it. So uh, now that we've opened up everything, let's uh, slide over to the desk here and we'll take a look at everything in a little bit more detail. Okay, so we're just going to quickly go through these things in the same order that I showed them to you inside the packaging, but now we're going to look at them outside of the packaging. So here is Osaka. So this is the Jedi character. She was the Padawan or the apprentice of... Uh, Anakin Skywalker in the Clone Wars and like I said she's a character I didn't know a whole lot about until quite recently um, like when the figures came out for the Rebels cartoon and I, I think I've called it Renegades a couple of times now but uh, 
So for the Rebels cartoon, they'd actually released these figures um, a couple of years ago. And I passed on most of the Rebels characters because I didn't know them. I had never watched the show Rebels and they just didn't interest me all that much. Osaka was one of those figures that had come out and I had seen it around and I had passed on it. Now, uh, all of the figures from that Rebel series from a couple of years ago have recently been re-released and they also finished making a couple of the characters that hadn't previously been released. And I'm glad I waited on this character because I had actually considered buying her. Even though I didn't know her before, I thought, you know, well, she's kind of a cool looking alien and I know she's supposed to be an important character in the mythology. So I had almost bought her a couple of years ago. But uh, with these re-releases, they're using the uh, kind of the digital painting on the face. And she's got a very realistic face sculpt. Like, it looks very nice. And it's not just the, the sculpt, it's the paintwork. Like, look at those eyes. There's multiple colors going on in the eyes. There's some shading going on. Like, it looks really nice. And uh, this same figure was released with a different paint scheme a couple of years ago. And you can see by comparison just how much better the new versions are. So, yeah, I'm definitely glad I waited. Had I bought this figure a couple of years ago, I'd be tempted to probably replace it just based on the uh, the paint job on the face alone. So, yeah, really nice looking figure. So, you can see her from all the different angles here. She's got lots of nice detail on her outfit. Double jointed knees. You know, lots of, lots of movement. Good range of movement there. Uh, the elbows, single joint on the elbows. But I won't go through all the articulation. It's pretty standard stuff. For accessories, she's got two lightsabers. So this one's kind of more of a standard looking lightsaber. This one here has got the uh, the tilted uh, hilt, which is sort of like what we saw with, I think, Count Dooku had lightsabers like that. Anyway, I'm just noticing now for the first time that she's got these little hooks on the side. And both of her lightsabers have these little holes there so you can store both of her lightsabers on the side there so that's pretty cool but uh, yeah it's a really nice looking figure nice articulation it's got all the accessories you need with a couple of lightsabers so yeah there you go there's osaka not too bad so next up we've got the scout trooper so take a closer look at him so he's pretty familiar if you are familiar with the uh, the biker scouts from return of the jedi um, the main thing that's different with him is his weapon. So I guess these guys, like I mentioned earlier, they're from a video game that I have not played. But these guys show up and they have these like energy spears. So this is a new accessory for him. This little energy bit, it can come off of it if you wanted to. But uh, it's kind of a nice little translucent uh, blue piece just to add a little bit of energy to him. Um, the, other, the other piece that seems to be new is this uh, weird uh, little cord that's attached to his wrist. And there's this like bendable plastic piece here. I don't really know what the uh, point of it is, but it tends to go over his back, over his shoulder, and attach to his wrist. So yeah, I don't know what that's all about. But this figure seems to be pretty much made up of existing parts. Um, I'll bring out my biker scout here. So this is the one that came with the speeder bike. So I've had this guy for a few years. And I mentioned earlier that this is your first time to get an opportunity to get the guy without a bike, but that's actually not true. I forgot they re-released this figure on a blister card uh, not too long ago. You might even you might even still be able to find it at like Walmart or something. But anyway, you can see here they share a lot of pieces, but the belts are quite different in that this guy, you know, he's just got these two pouches up front. He doesn't have any sort of like web gear. Whereas this guy, he's got the, the straps and this, this piece here is all different. The backs, like the, the same except for this whole canister, but that's part of the, uh, the web gear, which is a separate piece. But I think the head sculpts are pretty much the same. I'm not seeing much difference there. This guy's visor seems a little bit more reflective, like the black is a little glossier, where this guy's got a little bit more of a matte black on his visor. This guy's also got some weathering. You can see like the dirt painted on his chest and his boots are really dirty. Where this guy's here is uh, his paint job is nice and crisp. So yeah, overall he's a cool figure, but uh, I don't have a whole lot to say about him. If you've got this guy already, then you know what to expect. Um, but yeah, I'm a sucker for buying stormtroopers. So if they keep releasing them with slight variations, I'm going to keep buying them. 
Now here is the holiday edition of the Clone Trooper. So probably my favorite bit about him is his chest. He's got like a Christmas sweater pattern. And you can see he's got the Death Star on his chest. And just the way it's painted, it looks how you'd expect a knit sweater to look. It's really cool. Like, the figure itself is pretty silly. Some people will have no interest in these things whatsoever. He might look a little strange on my display year-round. But uh, it is the holidays. Uh, I don't know. There's a slight chance maybe I'll pack this guy away with my Christmas decorations and only bring him out on the holidays. But, but probably not. He'll probably stay out year-round. And yeah, he's, he's kind of neat. I like him. Even if it is just kind of a gag toy. Like if I was a kid and I had these things, would I really play with him as if he was like a, you know, a threatening stormtrooper? I, I don't know. But uh, yeah, he's kind of neat. And for his weapon, so you see here he's got, I don't know if this is a gun or some sort of energy sp a spear. I think this came with uh, another character I have. I think it might have came with my Knight of Ren. Uh, Vikram, I think his name was, or something along those lines. Vikruel. Um, so yeah, I think this is the same weapon he came with, except painted like a candy cane. Uh, his other accessory here was little Porg, which is kind of cute because I didn't have any of the Porg figures. So they painted a little scarf on the Porg, which is pretty cute. And as far as the figure itself, um, so he's a clone trooper, but he doesn't look like the kind of more, you know, the classic clone trooper that we're used to seeing from the movie Attack of the Clones. You can see his helmet's a little different. Um, I think this figure is pretty much a straight repaint of a more recent clone trooper I got. This here was called the Camino Clone Trooper. And I think these guys here are pretty much the exact same figure. You can see those head sculpts match up. Um, so yeah, if you've got this figure, you should know what to expect with this one. So articulation, you know, double jointed knees as well. He's got he's got double jointed elbows, unlike Ahsoka. And yeah, other than that, he moves like everybody else does, and he's pretty cool. If you're into this kind of goofy stuff, then you'll probably like this. And here's Blue Streak. So as I mentioned before, Blue Streak is one of the original Autobots. When the Transformers line was first launched by Hasbro back in 1984, this was one of the original figures. Now, I never had Blue Streak when I was a kid. Um, I had a lot, like between me and my brother Doug, we had a lot of the original Transformers, but we didn't have them all. And one of the areas that we had quite a few gaps in was the Autobot cars. Um, like neither of us had Prowl or Smokescreen, which were both repaints of uh, Blue Streak here. So there was three ways to get this sculpt of this figure, or well, the original one, and we didn't have any of them. Um, but yeah, he's a character that, you know, he's been around, he was in the comics, he was in the cartoon, but there's nothing really specific I remember about him. He didn't really have any quirky character traits. So, you know, he was never a character that I was like dying to get my hands on. But when I started collecting Transformers again as an adult around uh, 2004, 2005, um, I slowly started building up my collection. The first kind of modern figure I got was Bumblebee. And over the years I've gotten all kinds of characters that I never owned as a kid. So I have Prowl, I have Smokescreen. I've had those guys for years now. Um, and yeah, as the years have gone on through the various toy lines, whether it was Generations, whether it was Classics, whether, whether it was uh, Reveal the Shield or Titan's Return or uh, Combiner Wars, um, yeah, they didn't make any sort of blue streak um, that appealed to me. It, or they didn't make one that was at mass retail. There might have been a couple ones that were exclusives or um, convention things. But uh, yeah, there was never really a blue streak in the kind of classic look available at retail for all these years uh, until recently. Um, the line that was just out last year was called Siege. And there was a pretty nice version of uh, blue streak released in Siege. I never saw it. Um, I would have bought it if I had seen it, and I would have been satisfied with that version. However, I'm kind of glad it worked out this way, because this, the uh, Siege version, he transformed into kind of a more Cybertronian car. And considering this is my first ever Blue Streak, I'm kind of glad he transformed into kind of just a classic Earth car like I would expect from this guy. So, uh, yeah, I'm glad I tracked this guy down. And, uh, yeah, he looks really cool. No articulation. There's, you know, what 
what do you want to say? Like he, he moves well. He moves as well as any of the kind of modern uh, Earthrise siege figures. He blends in well. He feels a little short to me. I find that with uh, a lot of these cars nowadays, I feel they should be a little bit taller than they are. But I've gotten kind of used to it now because I've gotten Prowl and I've gotten Barricade and a couple other characters. And they all felt a little short to me at first. Um, I'm just going to bring in an Optimus Prime here so you can see how how he fares next to Optimus Prime. But uh, if I bring in my Bumblebee, now, mind you, the newer Bumblebee is going to be a little shorter, but this is the Bumblebee that I kind of consider my default Bumblebee right now. This is the one from like 2005. And he stands almost as tall as Blue Streak, which doesn't quite work for me. I feel he should be maybe just an inch taller or so. But that aside, I think he's a really cool figure. I think he looks pretty cool. Accessory-wise, he's got the two guns that can be removed from his from his shoulders. And then he's got a pistol in his hand as well. So yeah, not bad. So now let's take a look at 2D. So here you can get a closer look at his funky shoes. Now obviously 2D is much too tall for me to film the same way I was filming all those other figures. Now I will just say one of my fashion pet peeves is shoes without socks. You would never catch me wearing shoes like this without socks, but uh, it works for 2D. He's a little bit more fashionable and trendy than I am. Um, then he's got these like white slacks that look pretty good. Then he's got these kind of little gold buckles or rivets on the pants. Now the sculpting there, you know, I like that he's nice and smooth. It helps it match up with his animated look, but it's nice that they've gone, gone that extra mile to put some creases in his pants and some wrinkles there. A little bit of a seam there in the front where the zipper would be. Like it's a nice little attention to, uh, to detail. You can see how it bunches up there at his knee. That's pretty cool. So now if we pan up, so here's the rest of them. Let me zoom in here. So again, nice little sculpted details throughout the shirt. I like the uh, the look of the microphone. So it could maybe have had some more detail on it, like maybe some kind of like cross hatching lines or something on the, on the mic. Now let's take a closer look at his head here. So you can see the details on his face is just really nice. The way his uh, the way that gap is in his teeth. Like they could have just painted that like a black square, but no, it's actually sculpted so that he's missing his tooth. Now, if I have one problem with this thing, uh, kind of right outside the box, it's how his hair fits on his head. So bear with me a second. But so I already showed you how you take his hair off to change the batteries. But the way it sits, there's like a little gap right there at the uh, top of his uh, forehead from where the hair meets. and. I don't think there's any way to avoid that because like I said the hair kind of locks into place so it's pretty much in place where it is now um, where the way it sits on his ears I don't know if there's a whole lot of wiggle room so maybe I'm doing something wrong but it looks to me like there's that little triangle gap in his hairline and that's the kind of thing that would drive me crazy so hopefully with some adjustments maybe I can fix that but otherwise yeah, he looks great. I love that face sculpt. And one thing I will mention is like, I think the light up eyes is a cool feature. However, this guy's probably gonna end up in a glass case and it's not like I'm ever gonna just turn his eyes on for the sake of it. Maybe when I'm showing him to people for the first time, I'll be like, check out his eyes. But uh, considering that I'm not gonna use them all the time, I was a little worried that that feature might detract from the figure. But I think the eyes actually look pretty good as they are. So even if I never light him up or if you know he eventually breaks or something and doesn't light up any longer, I think it still looks pretty good. However, I do appreciate that on the secondary figure that's coming out, which I might order, um, his eyes are not light up any longer. So they're just painted the solid, uh, I can't remember if it's black or white, but they're painted just like a nice solid color. So I think that will probably look better in the long run than this. So it's nice that we get that option on the second 2D figure. But uh, yeah, I think this is cool. I'm still not 100% convinced I'm going to pull the trigger on the other four. I would like to, but they are still kind of expensive. And if they sell out before I pull the trigger, then so be it. At least I have this one 
2D figure in my collection to represent Jamie Hewlett's artwork. And uh, yeah, I think he's great. Now, I would love it if maybe Tank Girl figures will come next. Uh, who knows? So I guess I'm just about done, but uh, before I end this video, I am going to go run and get a little screwdriver so I can open up his head here and show you what his eyes look like once he's all lit up. So you can see there how I need a little, little screwdriver there. So let's go do that and then we'll wrap things up. Okay, so the batteries are in, so let's try this out. A little switch. There we go. So let me just turn off some of these lights here. So there you go. There he is with his eyes all lit up. If I turn off all these lights, we might get a better idea, but it might be a little too dark. Yeah, there you go. That's pretty creepy. All right, so there you go. That's 2D from Super Plastic. Okay, so that was episode 101. So I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I'm shooting this end bit before I shot the middle bit. So I'm hoping I came in at a reasonable length. I hope I didn't gab too much over there. Um, but yeah, anyways, whether this was long or whether it was short, I feel it's long because that introduction I think was like 15 minutes long. Anyway, but thank you very much for watching. I always appreciate it when you do. Um, I should see you before the holidays. I do plan to do, um, if not showing you my new stuff, maybe I'll actually get, a, get back to what I used to do and do some videos where I kind of review a whole uh, like a set of figures like a line of figures I've had some requests to review some of the G.I. Joe convention sets that I never got around to reviewing so that's something I might tackle in the next couple weeks anyway so thank you very much for watching hope you enjoyed it if you have any comments or questions please make sure to leave them below um, please like the video honestly I didn't know if the liking of the video really did anything other than stroke my ego but I've I've been watching somebody else on YouTube who had commented about the more likes that a channel gets or a video gets, the more frequently YouTube recommends it to others and that will increase views and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, I really would appreciate it if you like my videos because, you know, I take the time to do these things. So it would be nice if uh, YouTube recommended them to uh, other people that were watching toy videos. So yes, please like the video, comment below, subscribe to the channel. That'd be great too. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Ciao.